Goeiemorgen. Hoe gaan dit met allemaal voor ochtend? Niet zeker nie. Who's sure about today and who's not sure about today? Ok, wie is niet zeker nie? Ok, so jy weet jy dat opgestaan volgend. Cool. Ok. Ek wil niet aangaan waar ons afge... Waar, waar ons... Um, ons het so vier weke terug begin. Kan jy onthou waarmee? As jy met my daar analies kan nie jylle na jylle eerste slide toe gaan, ek sê jy vinnig dat die vat, ek sê jy sê wanneer die kan jy skuif, ons het begin met iets wat ons genoem het, starting from scratch, sien ons het het bloe betlaad, ek wil bieke, dit is wat softer nou, thank you, ja, that's about it, ja, thanks, en, toe, wat ons toe gedoen het, ons het die, die ding opgebreek, in die jylle paar goed, vir ochend, ach, nie vir oogend, nie vir die tyd, en ons het begin met energize your faith, but before we got to energize in your faith, we looked at something that sort of takes everything together, and the scripture that came to mind was when we received this from Paul in Romans 15 verse 13, and he said this, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace, because you trust in him, then you will overflow with confident hope, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we started on that, that, um, so many, many, many weeks ago. We came to the, to the, to the conclusion that um, when teams have to go back to basics who are in sports or even companies that need to find out why, why they're not performing, they, num- they go back to something and they say we need to work on the fundamentals. Ons moet in fundamentele goed moet ons weer werk, die goed wat uitkom, die goed wat ons mee begin het. But we also saw that how important the church is to Jesus Christ and how important you and I are to God. Now what, I, what we did see is this, we saw that the scripture said in Revelation 2 verse 4 and 5, it says we, 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 John is receiving the revelation from Jesus and he says I have this one complaint against that you don't love me as each, you don't love me or each other as you did at first. Now look, look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and I will remove your lampstand from the place among the churches. And that's a very bad, sad, sad day that if, if that ever happens, that if God comes and he removes the lampstand from amongst the churches, meaning exactly that your salvation thread and my salvation thread will be removed, and Jesus, as the light of the world, will be removed from the churches. This is what it begin it. And I think this is the, the, the basis of thing from all of us. I don't know if of, of your ouders here under each other, each other not yet seen it, nie, and you think that these ouders are there, and there is a work there, and Maar as jy so om jou kyk, sal jy vir my volgend kan sê, jy ken mekaar, of het jy daar iemand al moet, of jy het al, hierdie moet, hierdie mens het ek al ewers gegroet in my leven, sal jy, sal jy dink of so iets, is daar iemand wat jy nog nooit in jou leven gegroet het, die so nie? See, that's what happens to us, because you see, we, 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 we become like machines, we go and we come, and we go and we come, and we go and we come. This is always now, if you want the shops full, then you have something called Black Friday. But you can't have Black Friday for, 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 for church. You can't even have a Black Sunday for church. The Black Sunday for church is when people don't go to church. This is what gebeur. So, wat hier aan die gang is, is die volgende, is dat zondag is die, 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 die coolste dag van die week. En dan moet nie een special wees by die kerk voor ons kerk te gaan nie. Dat moet nie wees van 2 vir 1 of 3 vir 2 nie. It must be in our heart to go. Because God says that, that, that my church is, is what I'm going to come back for. That's, that's my bride. This, this is my bride. And I'm going to come back for that. And I'm going to fetch that. And I'm going to bring. Maar as jylle nie doen wat ek jylle vraag om te doen nie, I'm going to just remove that lamb stands. So you, there will be no marriage. Eina. Somebody say Eina. Ah. 
So I want you to stand. Everybody just stand up quickly. I want, because I want to make chaos here today. Chaos. I said it's going to be epic this morning. Believe me. It's going to be epic. <clears throat> We're going to make chaos here this morning. I want everybody to walk amongst each other and greet people you've never greeted before. Like, well, you want to do Because when Jesus comes, you're going to be shy too. When it falls now. Was that that bad? So why don't we do it every Sunday? Groet met mekaar. Welkom mekaar. It's like... Okay. Awesome. Okay. I think that's what God wants us to do. If we're God's children, we must act like God's children. Amen. And that is what it is. So, okay, then what we're going to do is the thing we're going to do from We call it energize your faith. Because you can have faith, but if your faith is not energized, you don't have faith. Okay, so you wanted, you wanted energy in your faith. And we looked at Hebrews 11, 1, which is the faith, you know. We looked at David verse 1, and it, and it said the following, 11 verse 1, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So we worked through faith, and I'm not going to go through all those things, I'm just going to give it to you quickly. We worked through those things, and we worked through that energizing your faith, because you can say, one thing you can say, is you can energize your faith, but if you don't go into the, in, into the, the other part, which says energizing into the working part thereof, nothing is going to happen. So in other words, you must in the work in the work of the world, and to say, but if you don't do it, you don't do it, in the work of the world, you don't do it for my work. And when we went and when we talked about hope, we spoke about hope. We said fortify your hope. And what we took out of that, we said that, that your hope is the protection against the attack that you will receive from the devil. So elke een van ons moet hoop binnen in ons hee. As ons nie hoop het nie, het ons niks nie. Amen. So die hoop wat ons het hee, moet die, moet die hoop wees van so dat ek kan, alles wat na teen my toe, alles wat my aanval, sal ek dan op, ek sal beskerm wees tegen die aanvalle daarvan. There's another word that we said for, for hope is an, it's a confident expectation. And a confident expectation becomes a hope that you desire more than ever before. When we looked at hope, we went through hope, we did everything, we put some scriptures down to hope, we looked at the fortifying part of hope as well. That was a long thing. Then we, we, we came to, to love. That was last week. And we said that you can have love but if you don't activate your love, there's no love. Amen. And then we looked at what Paul said about love. And we looked at all those things that Paul said. And I can't go into every single one of those things. But we looked at the importance of love. We looked at the, the scripture was 1 Corinthians 13, which we know so well. The fourth, to the, the fourth to the eighth verse. Then we looked at how important love is. We took out things from the Bible. The importance of love. How important is love in your life. Can I just see, is love important to your life? Amal? Okay. And how important do you think that love is for God from us to Him? This number the end. For if you see the word, is, it also said that God loved the world. And if God loved the world, it's because it's like Jack and Jill. If Jack loves Jill and Jill loves Jack, and then this is the way it's going to operate. So if God loved the world, the world should love God. And if the world doesn't love God, then we, we're failing in our purpose as the creatures that God created for us to come to our to come to our purpose. We can't decide where we are going to go. We can't decide where we are going to the Bible. Not if we are not for the Lord. Because if you say, but this is just how my life works, then you say, I'm right. Then you have to not be concerned about your man and your woman, because they are going to decide on your Wednesday or Wednesday. Of donderdag gaan die vee nie. En volgende week, dalk saterdag, en die halfde van zondag. Moe nie dan klaar daar oor nie. Because your relationship with God, and my relationship with God, is a love relationship. And that love should never be, and it should be a never ending love relationship. Wanneer ons moet die Heere dier mekaar is. As ek vir my uitgee, as een kind van God, as iemand, as ek, ek vir jou vandag sê, ek is lief vir die Heere, dit beteken, kan ek nooit verskoning sê, om nie by die Heere uit te kom nie. Die mensdom per se vandag, het te veel verskonings, hoekom ons God nie kan aanbid nie. 
And it's all got to do with love. And you'll, see, you'll find out, if you go and sit still, and you'll find out, you say, but what did I do to I not to I not to I said I will not care to go on. What did I do? I'm not talking about a lot of people have a lot of things to do. Okay, there's projects and stuff like that, and you get caught up. And and you, I'm talking about just razzmatazz stuff. Like an other word, I go go I go so my car go go spite Sunday. I get to get Sunday, but you hear the car lekker groen spite. That you don't. How, how do you love God like that? Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go, oh, I can't say the word, because they made you a mock. And there's no love there. Because God made you made that mistake. That's why we must come to this place in our life and to say, but how, how do I deeply love God? And if we came to those four places, we're going to come this morning and we're going to do this thing. Because if you understand that God loves you, if you understand that that you have this vreugdevolle verhouding with the Lord, that you don't have a seer verhouding, who wants a seer verhouding with the Lord? Who wants a vreugdevolle verhouding with the Lord? You have just not so seer as what I've asked for the first time. Yo, Ons verhouding met die Heere moet vreugdevol wees. Dit moet nie geheim wees nie. Verstaan jy? Partij, partij mense in die verlewe wat ek ken vandag, as jy vraag, as jy kind van die Heere, dan sê jy, oh, ek wil nie goed kyk of ek hy ID-kaartje het. Al bestaan nie so iets nie. Ons is of een kind van die Heere, of ons is nie een kind van die Heere nie. En as jy kind van die Heere is, dan moet jy een vreugdevolle kind van die Heere wees. En ander woorde, vreugdevolle kinders van die Heere het nie verskonings om nie te doen wat God wil hulle moet doen nie. Amen. That's just the way it is. Daar is goed wat ons weer hou. Ek praat nie van, ek praat van aan die touw. Verstaan jy? Ek, ek, yes, en ek het al verskonings in my leven gehoor hoor. Ek het al verskonings opgehoor in my leven. Kan jy geloof nie? Yes, weet ek, sondag oogend opstaan, Peter, toe kom ek achter, tjo, die hond moet vir arts toe gaan en ek het deel vergeer daarvan. Nee, ek hoop jy die afspraak by die veearts gehad. Maar die hond het nie gestrand siek geword nie. Verstaan. So, dis nie wat ek sê nie. Ek sê net, as jy vreugde het in jou verhouding met die jylle, if you have joy in your heart, if you have full on joy in your heart for Christ, then you will, then you will serve God with joy. Somebody say amen dan sal jy die Heere dien moet verrichte. Nie moet ons hier gezicht nie. Nie moet, ach, jy moet ons alweer keer toe gaan nie. Ach, jy sê, die ouwe ons alweer hier die ding aan die gang. Ach, jy sê, weet jy, dis die vijfde keer wat ons die ding al sing hierdie maand. Dis die vreugde nie. Glad nie. Vreugde is om te doen wat God wil hy hier moet doen. En dit is om om 100% lief te hee. As ek en jy die Heere 100% kan lief hee, dan sal ons vreugde in ons hart hee. Amen. Those things just work together. So let's just look at this this morning then. And let's just go through this thing. We say, we want to enhance our joy. We're not going to only do that. We're going to do, we're going to do it double folded. We're going to say, we're going to enhance our joy. And we're going to enjoy our peace. Because what does the enhancement of joy bring? Joy brings peace. If there's no joy, you find no peace. Come on, somebody, somebody say amen to that. Yeah. Dis hoe dit werk. As daar nie vreugde is nie, sal jy nie vrede heen nie. En jou moeilikheid in die leven word al hoe meer, omdat die goed van God uitgehaal is. En ek weet, ons is allemaal mense, ons gaan allemaal dier die sjaal goed. And we have to decide for ourselves at the end of the day, who are we serving? Is it God we serve? Then we need to serve God. Who are we serving? So here's the deal. What is the, def- the, the if, you, if I said to you this morning, would you define joy for me? What would you say? As jy, nie, as jy vreugde moet, moet defineer vir ochend, hoe sal jy sê, moet jy so like, of kan jy maar so ook like? How would you define, how do you define your joy? What, what makes you joyful? What makes you happy? 
And then you see, wait, why would I want to ask that question? <clears throat> because if I look at the word joy and I go back into the Bible and I look at the, at the language people spoke, who spoke that time and how, how words were made up when the Bible was written. And I look at the Greek, for instance, and I look at the, and I look at the Hebrew a little bit later on. But if I look at the word joy in Greek, it means kara. Kara. And kara is closely to, to the, related to the world called, to the word called charis. So we have kara and we have charis. So what, what does this all mean to us? Because charis means this. Charis means grace. Somebody say grace. And what is grace? Grace is undeserved favor. That is guns wat ons kry wat ons eindelijk nie toekom nie. Dit is genade. So charis, which means grace, is undeserved favor. But in turn, that undeserved favor, if you go through grace and you've received grace, and you've received and you understand this, and you've this undeserved favor, you, you will know, also know that sometimes that, that turns into joy, into pleasure, and into delight. Of as ek verkeerd as ek so sê. It's exactly what happens. So that's that, that, that part. So if I go to the word kara, because that's not grace, because kara means joy. And I look at that part, which is joy, and I look at the response of what we have, and I add that because it's the response of undeserved favor, that I'm receiving. And ander woorde, guns wat nie vir my toekom nie, is dit wat ek ontvang. En as ek dit by mekaar gaan sit, dan denk ek as ek die, die kerris gedeelte en die karre gedeelte by mekaar gaan sit en ek sê, this delightful response that I'm receiving, who should I project it to? To God. Why? But here's the deal. Here is for my show cool and here is the thing. Because if I look at Karis and I look at Kara and I, and I look at the word Karis and I say that, if I look at, okay, let me leave Karis out and I go to Kara, Kara and I say, but hang on Peter, Kara could also be added onto that, could be my character. Amen? That word my character. Kara. This my character. But if it's undeserved favor, that I'm receiving into my character from God, which is the joy that is releasing into the part called kara, which I do not know, I've only heard about that today, and the kara, which is my character, is receiving the, the undeserved joy from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I hear it for me, and I lost, lost it, lost, I lost it, lost it, me. Then I become something which jumps around with joy, serving God with joy, shouting with joy, proclaiming the kingdom with joy, and I become the other part which is called the charismatic. What's this, this really? That's what God wants. He's dying for us to be like that. He bring us by my car and I say, but this is what I want you to be. This is what my vreugde for you must do. But you see, because if you're receiving this delightfulness that God has given you, because it's His response to your character and your charismatic character that you put, you put it together, His delightful response to you is become a live man. Maar ons loop so rond. Ken jy die Heere? Ach, baie goed, my broer. Is hy goed? Oh, ja, hy is altyd goed. Door hy goed in jou oor gooi. Hy is altyd goed. We don't have it. We don't show it. Jy kan die beste program in die leven by mekaar roep. And I've seen it in all these years that I've been in ministry. I think you, you're so excited and God's released it into your spirit and you pray about it and you've received it. And you... And you will run spring and you want to make a freak flock on an Arabic sprung, the same gedeelte, and I was just look at you like this. And I'm going, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon our character so that our character can absorb the charismatic life that you want for us. A kind van die Heere moet altyd vol vreugde wees. Dit is moeilik as jy moeilikheid het. Jy kan nou vir jy, ek weet jy, dan gaan allemaal gelijk terugskree. Maar jylle weet jy, jy weet jy, want ons dier gaan nie. 
Het is recht. Jullie weet niet wat ik hier ga doen. That's just the way it is. But I can't let my circumstances control my destiny. Come on man, help me quickly. Word toch een bykie levendig. Wie water ek wil in dat spuit. Ek gaan ek volg, ek volgende week gaan ek een brandpijpie so gooi. So what is the importance of joy? Let me give you something that I want you to remember. That joy is the essential element of what const- constitutes the kingdom of heaven. De vreugde. Joy is the essential element or an essential element. Not the an essential element. Dis a essentiale gedeelte wat ek en jy moet hee because it constitutes the kingdom of God. Children of God need to show the world they are children of God. Vandag loop ons rond en ons, ons lyk so zorro achter, achter masker. Ons bepaal wanneer ons kinders van hier is. And you see what's going to happen as jou leven moet het weerspeel. Op die einde van die dag. So if you look at Romans 14 verse 17, as die 17 dat ene. If you look at Romans 14 verse 17, you'll see for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat, drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Verstaan? Ons bepaal dit van hoe ons aantrek, waar ons gaan, hoe wat ons gaan, wat, 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 wat rei ons, want hoe, by, met wie is ons vriende kring, we, we, we come to that place, the, the, king, the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink. Doesn't matter how we hang out. You see, die ene ook kan na een baie liekse plek toe gaan, en die ook een ander ook kan wimpie toe gaan, en die derde ook kan vir my portie chips koop op die sypaakie stil. Dit is allemaal die selfde, is allemaal die hart van God dra. Dit is hoe dit werk. Sê kwestie van die ene ou is beter as die ander ou nie. But it's a, but, but what it is, it's a, of a living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. As ek en jy nie die heilige geest binnen in ons het nie, en die vreugde van die heilige geest, kom nie uit my uit nie. Vir die wereld om te aanskou, en is net nie die, 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 die heilige geest, sy vreugde nie, maar wat die, die sy goedheid en sy vrede, moet ook in my wees. Dan, wees ek vir die wereld, wat vreugde is. Then I come to this place, and I say, what am I doing, Peter? I'm enhancing my joy. Ek maak die vreugde, in my leven, wat God op my, my losgelaten het, maak ek groter. Ek wees dit vir die wereld. We jy sien, want vreugde kom, en hy vat al hierdie goed, hierdie, hierdie swaar goed, wat op jou skouwers is, what joy does, it comes and it lightens the burden, of all those trial, trials, that you go through in life. Al hierdie goed, wat jou druk in die leven, as jy vreugde van God in jou het, dan maak dit dit lichter. Wie van jy was al een goeie beradingssessies gewees, en dan, jy in die beradingssessie, dan sê die ou wat jou beraad, net ene iets, en dan even skielik, gaan die licht aan want die vreugde begin inkom, en dit wat jy deurgegaan het, begin uitgaan, maak dit sin, that's what happens, but you see, we got to allow that stuff to come in, in other words, God has got to be in control of our lives, God has got to be more than anything else in your life and in my life, when he wants to come to you, and he says to you, it's important for you to understand that, because the importance of joy is all written in what I'm saying to you guys now, what is enhancing your joy? Om jou, om jou vreugde te vergroot, mooi te maak, beter te maak, groter te maak. Jesus and his apostles they gave us words where your joy and my joy might be full. And those words are absolutely very simply these. In John 15, 11 he says, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. And your joy will overflow. Who's received Jesus into your heart as your personal savior? As your personalke saligmaker? As in your heart? Does that make you joy? Maak dit jou vol leven? Maak dit jou vir jou, jy wil die wereld gaan breek en vir ander vertel van Jesus? That's joy. That's joy. He's telling other people about what Jesus did for you. That's joy. 
But sitting around and moping all day, what Jesus hasn't done for you since 8 o'clock this morning until 12 o'clock tonight, that's not joy, that's complaining. And when you complain, you would find that complainers, the complaining society of Vintuk, if there is such a, such a body called the complaining society of Vintuk, I beg you to go and find them, and I beg you to find the joy in those people. You will find no joy in those people. Because all they'll complain about, as I say, die meer moet wit gever word, al verf hulle die wit, dan kom hulle terug, dan sê hulle, maar ek het die gemeente is die wit nie. There will always be something other. Because there's no joy in their hearts. Joyous people are happy for other people. If you come to know Christ, a, a, a real Christian, if you come to know Christ, will jump up and down and say, thank you Jesus. A real Christian will run around finding people that are not already been, t- been brought into the kingdom of God and pray with them and make them children and then ask them to become children so that Christ can make them disciples like you are. That's a joyous moment. And when, when joy goes to one to the other, it's contagious. Then it spreads around. And then we're doing what Jesus wants us to do as the church. That's when he says, I will build my church and the hell, gates of hell will not overcome it. Next, when he doesn't say, I will come to you guys and I will remove my blam stand from you because you aren't doing what I've asked you to do. I don't see the joy. I don't see the work that you're supposed to be doing for me. Amen. It is difficult. How's your character this morning? Dead, charismatic, or just hoping? How's your character? Is it joyful? Is it cool? You guys can understand why I said in the beginning we need to start from scratch. We need to understand that this word of God, which is the voice of God, Given to you and I on paper. Op hierdie, in hierdie boek is die stem van God. Somebody say die stem van God. In hierdie boek is die stem van God. Lees om dat hy met jou terugpraat. Let us be released from the worldly stuff that we listen to every day. Things go better with Coca-Cola. Wie kan dit doen? Gee ek my ouderdom weg. Dit het ek gehoord dat vijf jaar oud was. Guys and ladies, we've come to this place. I need to ask you this. What does your daily Bible study look like? What does your daily walk with God look like? Is it so that this what binnen in you is? That charismatic character that you have become, that you have learned from Jesus. Is that character what you say, ek, ek wil, as ek opstaan, first thing, man, is, is the ding, die ding is die ding van, waar le dit, waar staan dit geskryf, is nie om te sê, waar staan, go look for it, die ding binnen in jou, wat, wat net vir jou, wat vir jou jaag, that's God, talking to you, looking at your character, seeing that it's tired, and it's moog, and it doesn't want to anymore, wants to come and it, bring your character up to a joyful joyfulness, so that you become this charismatic, you see, charismatic people are, are always that hoi man, you know what I mean, you like, you, you, want, you want to show where you serve God, I want to like clap my hands, and put my hands in the air, I'm not saying if you don't do it, it's not wrong, I'm just saying it's the joy that I have for God, I'm just saying that when I walk around and, and, and do what I do and, and dress like I dress, it's not because I can, I can, I can, I can respect the Lord. My laughter is not in my t-shirt, man. My laughter is not in my shoes. My laughter is in my heart and in my spirit. That's my laughter. But if you want me to go glum, say for me, I put a suit and a tie on track and here to come sit, but I can always so sit. And I want to understand what God is trying to do because God's building my character, not my wardrobe. Then I receive joy. Don't unfang it, dear Frechter. How do you, do we find it, yeah? Crowns the dear. When last did that book speak to you? Like, wow. Ek hoor mense wat my sê, Peter, ek hoef nie te lees nie, ek, ek, ek weet waar daar staan. Yes, ek lees hier die Bijbel al lang, en ek sê vir ek lees elke dag iets wat ek hier geweet het. 
Hier die Bijbel is duizenden jaar oud, die mense preek vandag nog uit die selwe woord uit, aan die goede. Ay, dan, kan nie besluit, ek weet waar ons staan. Bible needs to be read. Let's go back to what we've done throughout this thing, so that we can energize our faith. So that we can fortify our hope. Activate our love. And enhance our joy. Wat ons vir oogend oor van praat. Did Jesus ever stress the importance of prayer? He did. Hy het het gedoen. He went this far. He went this far. If you go look at John 16, you go and read John 16. You understand what John 16 is all about. You can just check what he said in John 16. You have a look, see what he says there in John 16. He talks. There's a whole story, and I can't go through all the verses. But he says this. That's important. That he, what he's saying is that there's the whole story about who he is and what he is and. Well, how important it is to use his name when we pray and things like that and what power the name of Jesus is. And, but he comes to the 24th verse which I've put up there for you guys and he says this, he says, you haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. What does it say? Abundant joy. He says, you've never done this before because always you've prayed. You, you gegaan and you've said, little fishes, lick your dishes, rub a dub dub, thanks for the grub. But there's no honest tussen in die goede nie. You know, the Bible says that you and I must pray and in the name of Jesus, we need to ask for stuff. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would heal my wife, Father God, that you would take away her pain, you take away her suffering, Father, and I pray it in the name of Jesus that I would receive it. Because what you're doing is you elev- you're taking yourself out of the picture and you're elevating the power of Christ into what you're doing about. And when that happens, then that comes through. And those things start click, clicking in one after the other. Dan is dit nie wie gebid het nie. Dan is dit die naam en die kracht van Jesus Christus wat aangevra is om die veel wonderwerk te doen. En dit wont jou in een plek inbring waar die vreugde in jou so groot word dat jy nie kan stilstaan nie. That you want to dance before Jesus. Why do you think that David danced in his other rods before God? Because he had joy in his heart. God understood what David wanted. David called God by name. David submitted to God in everything he did. For you and I to understand joy, we've got to submit to God in everything we do. So that he can come and build our character into the charismaticness that he wants you to be. Inside of you is something that God has never developed. That's iets wat nog nie vol, vol, vol uit groter gemaakt nie. En hy wil het graag. Wil hy die werk voltooi. And that's why he says, you will, you haven't, you, I know why you haven't got, you do, because you've never done this stuff before. Because your character was dead. There was no charismaticness in it. But I've released that to you. I've released joy to you. Joy that gives you these things into your character. Joy that will make you different. Just by using my name. Net omdat jylle my naam gebruik. If you ask using my name, in other words, what you're doing is you're elevating me. You're seeing for where your help is coming from. The Psalm Dichter say, I look unto the mountains, where does my help come from? Not from the mountain man, but from the God who created the mountains. Verstaan, en by die stadion van die wezenheid is my goede groter as die berge. And I think a lot of people feel like that today. But we, this, the, 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 die berge gaan niks vir jou kan doen nie, maar die, wat gaan gebeur, is dat die, die God wat die berge gemaakt het, gaan die verskil maak. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a psalm, I think it's 127, I think it says, it says that, I look to you who are enthroned in heaven. It's for my so mooi. Enthroned in heaven. Dit is vir my so, so bitterlik, bitterlik, bitterlik mooi. Is dit die in 27 is, is daar in elk geval, is in my call. Does answered prayer excite you as a Christian? As jou gebed verhoor word, raak jy opgewonde? Of vergeet jy vir wie of jou wat waar word het? Because that's what happens. God gives us what we want, and dat gaat ons. We just forget who God is for that moment. 
That when the next time we come back with our character, which is the charismatic character, because your character, which is charismatic, can be a worldly charismatic character, not a godly charismatic character. And you see, you find yourself floating all over the world. My sockers must opgelossen gemaakt wat ek wil hou. Nou strijk die popel weer die fan. Jere, ek het vergeet, ek is jammer. Help me again. Instead of just building from the one to the next, to the next, to the next. God's brought you this place this morning, my friend, with a purpose. Is that your characters will become charismatic for the kingdom of God. Somebody say, man. Not for a show, not for a God help us. Not for a show. Not for a show. But in the name of Jesus that has come today in a place. In the name of Jesus. When people got healed, you go to the Bible and you read it. People were filled with joy. The blind could see, the deaf could hear, the lame could walk, and there was joy. There was a lot of joy because they could actually see what God could do. If you say to me today, Peter, I want answered prayer, and I'm going to say to you, your answered prayer should have joy in answered prayer. Jy sien, baie van ons werk dit so, die Heere geef vir ons wat ons vraag, en dan vergeet ons om dankie te sê wat God vir ons gegeet het. But it's not, I know it's not you out. But maybe there's some other out that you know. I mean, just go and share that with him quickly, when you see him this week. Because if we miss that point, then we've missed that abundance of joy that we need to give back to the King. Because what God created you and I for was exactly that. Is that when things come to us and as we receive it and it comes into position and it comes into line and we fall on our knees and we say, Heere, dankie vir jy wat jy vir ons gegeet, dankie dat jy my gebed gehoor het, dankie Heere dat ek jy voorig het om my verhouding met jy te het, Heere. En dankie Vader God wat my hart vol vreugde vandag kan wees. Nie net vir vandag vir die gebed wat beantwoord is nie, maar as dit vir die gebed is, then it's going to happen again and again and again. Because we need to thank God all the time for what He's doing for us. Amen. Moe nie so gehoor het, like, kom nie vandag hier. We've got time to fix it up, and you say to me, how do you know? I'm not going to tell you. <clears throat> what is the practice? I'm not going to ask you to be personal, but I'm going to ask you to say to you, what is, what is your practice when you read this Bible daily? If Don't you read it daily? Don't answer to me, just to yourself. Lees jy hierdie woord elke dag? Can't you get enough of this word in you? Are you, when are you a problem at, are you, are you, do you go to look for the answer in the Bible? Is here a book, your life manual? Is your car is a lichtje aankom op your dashboard, dan gaan mis in your handboek, dan gaan soek jy mos, nou kom is die lichtje nou. Is that what you do when your lichtje aankom? Do you actually go and look? Hoe kom is it aan? When you do something that you shouldn't be doing, you can check who comes with your angel. Find the answer and stop doing what you should be doing. When there is thankfulness in your heart, is you say, "I will forgive you," but I don't know why. The light has come. I have not looked at how I should do it. That's why this book is written. Ons het die vandagse lewe te slim geword, ons dink ons ken hierdie bybel van voor tot achteruit, ons, we can recite, I can recite many, many verses from this bybel, but that doesn't mean I know the bybel. Unless this bybel cannot speak back to me in a conversation that I'm having when I'm reading it, and the Holy Spirit is speaking into my mind, and things are picturing, and things are forming, I then I'm not reading this book. The joy of God is in the voice of God, which is in your hand, which is in my hand. And God wants to release that into your spirit, of, to change your character into the charismaticness, so that you and I will start understanding that this word will jump off the paper. And I shall live in the word, and I shall be there in stand, and I shall be there in the word, 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 
every time. And God wants you and I to understand that today. And that's why, my friend, when I started this thing five weeks ago, I called it simply this, starting from scratch. Kom ons begin by die begin. Kom ons sit hier die goed, waar ek dink ek is ver af van die pad af. Ek dien die Heere al soveel jare oud, Peter. Is nou maar net hoe dit werk. Proud people fall very hard. Kom ons kom in die plek en dat hier die woord elke dag met my sal spreek. And do me a favor, don't find it on your app. Go and find it in your Bible. Use your app wat daar nie a Bible is nie. Maar moet nie a gewoonte maak van die app nie. Unless you're very technical strong in those things. But like me, I'm technically nutted in the head yet. Yeah, wat ek ook al gedoen het, wat gesien het, wat die, wat, wat, wat die app met my maak, het maak my lei. Just, Lord, I know, I, I can't remember the verse now, but I know it's literally, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna Google those two words, Lord, quickly. And I get helped out of my demise quickly. But that isn't, it's not for me. I must go and sit down and say, Lord, I, I know it's there. I know, I know it's somewhere in Genesis, Lord. I know, I know. These verses, Lord, what, which chapter? You know what? That's speaking to the Holy Spirit. Helping you to develop understanding the Word of God. That's what moet gebeur. Hoe kom ons hierdie goed belangrik? Eenvoudig die volgende, want wanneer ek en jy die dag by die God gaan kom, when we're going to meet Christ that day, He's going to ask us, what do you know? How do you know it's me? And that we can't understand. So that's why we call these things, now if I found everything in, that we've done up until now, then there's one thing that I should be doing, getting, that's filtering through right from the beginning. So all the good that I've said, there's something that starts filtering through now, and it's called peace. We seek freedom in your life. Dan sal vrede begin deersuiver in die ouse lewe. Wat is vrede? Wat is die definitie van vrede? What do you think is the is the definition um, of, of peace? The definition of peace is something called a harmonious relationship. It's in a harmonious relationship. Now, if you go back into the Bible, you would know that we always pray this prayer and we speak these things and we go through these things and we say that the Bible says, where there's unity, God will bring a blessing. Is that true? You know what unity is? There will never be unity if there's no harmony. So the Bible doesn't use the word unity, it uses the word harmony. And from harmony comes harmonious. Two things, one to the other. And he says when there is harmony, what is harmony? Harmony is like, my ductile manier van dinge sien is, maar net hierdie manier van, I just see O's just like dancing the same, walking the same, talking the same. Holding hands the same. It's the in what I'd let us see. That's what I see. That's harmony. This in it. And he sees that. And he looks at a bunch of flawed individuals this morning. And he says, all I'm wanting from you guys is if you understood everything and, you, and your heart says, Father God in Jesus' name, I need to start from scratch. I need to start from the beginning. Here, I, here, I react. Here, here, I, I get back to I get, I get work nodig, I get work nodig. I come up a place here, where I can feel the my my life for me. He says, "Cool, just sway with me. Just sway with me. Just sway with me in my life. Just sway with me." Just sway with me. Just sway with me. And my friend, as you die stok stuif, drie stuk pak mannetjie in die leven is, en jy weet is so geskryf, en jy moet so staan, you're gonna sway with nobody. 
The charismaticness of your character would never be touched by God and you will stand there like this oh scheming as all the here the men some mall and what gaan moet hulle aan and every time you argue and against what's happening around you you are forcing God out of your life where the other oh's who are just going together praying together come lord jesus come bring the peace bring just change my teach me your word just sway with me let us get into this beat lord just bring it to me lord then what god does he checks it and he said i love you let me take this charismatic character and let me bless it in harmony for you people today wow raak jy nie opgewonde nie raak jy opgewonde Ook hoe sit jy dan so? God, Lord Jesus, let this place shake. My friend, the importance of peace is also a crucial element in the constitution of the kingdom of God. As jy vraag vir mens om by jou kerk aan te sluit, die die drie stuk pak ouwens, wat so stap, eerste ou wat vir jou sien, ek ken hulle, ek is al dier dit, hoe lyk die constitutie van hulle kerk? Hou weet jy is waar hou jou kerk, nie vrou, lyk die constitutie van jou kerk. My constitutie is ok, broer, ek het om nie geskryf nie, die woord van God het om geskryf. A statement of faith is not ours, it's a God statement of faith. That's who we are. That's how it is. The word of God says this, in Romans 14 verse 17 to 19, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what you eat or drink. Somebody say that, eat or drink. It's not a matter of what you eat or drink, but it's, it's, it's but of living life, of goodness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Somebody say Holy Spirit. If you serve Christ with this attitude, you will please God and others will approve of you too. So then let us aim for the harmony in the church and try to build each other up. Somebody say, Amen, man. In alle woorde, al wat Peter net nog gedoen het, vir hy die goed uitgesê, hy gedink, Jesus, daar ons al heel uit die bus het nou, want dit is nou, it's exactly what it says in the Bible. It's exactly what it says. Maar ons opreid in die koninkryk van die Heere, soos een klomp tarantal, kyk ons op een warm teerpad, elke ou in sy eie richting. Why? Why can't we just love each other? Why can't we just walk with one another? Why can't we just sway together? Why can't we just pray together? Why don't we come to a place of peace and say, peace with people contributes me receiving peace from God. Can I say that again? Peace with people lets me have a contribution of peace from God. Ek moet opostry met mense, ek moet opostry met mense aan my hart, ek moet opostry met mense aan my kop, I must just go into this thing and say, Father God, you know how long that ook has wronged me, but Father, you sort it out, I don't need to sort it out. Ons probeer oorvat, 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 en ten die vierde keer wat ons oorgevat het, is daar geen vrede nie. Amen. Jy soe feit in jou kop, en jy het mense jou nou no, no loslaat, dan gaan dat ontplof jy die sandlam gebouw in die middel van die dorp, jy was. Jy is so kwaai. Don't do that. Proverbs 16 verse 7 says this, when people's lives please the Lord, even the enemies are at peace with them. How's that? When people's lives please the Lord, then even the enemies are at peace. But you see, as when your life starts pleasing God, God gives you a full portion of peace. A full portion of peace means that your enemy cannot find his way through, that, through that full portion of peace om your life to come omkrap aan die binnenkant. Praat ek recht vir oogend of praat ek verkeerd? Dankie, Annelies. Hier ouwens dink nog daar oor. 
How do you enjoy your peace? Hoe gaan ons hierdie, hierdie, hierdie vrede, hoe gaan ons dit geniet? Now the first thing, how your peace will begin, is if you look at the Bible and you look at Romans 5 verse 1, I want to give you something, and before I read the scripture to you, I want to say this, is that your peace will be only begin through the justification you find in Christ. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace. With God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. If you've received Christ into your life, if you've become a Christian of note, if you've become a free person in your spirit, if Jesus is number one in your life, then you should have found peace. If you haven't found peace, then your salvation hasn't come through 100% in your life. It's not what I'm saying, it's what that says. And God comes this morning and God says, guys and ladies, you are so precious to me. You are my people. You are my children. You are my family. And the day you said yes for my, to, my, to the cleansing of the blood of my son into your life, it made me, made me happy. I became joy. I released my Holy Spirit upon you. And when I released that, I wanted you to serve with my son with the attitude that you would start, you would keep on pleasing me so that other people will approve of you that what you are doing and the way you are serving me and the way you are walking in me. So then he says, he says, let us aim for the harmony within the church to build each other up. Scripture I read a little while ago. Let us aim for that harmony because what we are doing, we're pleasing to God in his eyes. Amen. That's what it is. That's when we want the stuff. And we should be enjoying it. He says, since we have made right with what I've just said, and the Holy Spirit has been released to you and I, we now walk by faith and not by sight. We have peace with, 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 with God because of what Jesus did for you when he died on the cross. Wow. What a pleasure. What a privilege to serve Him. Can we say this morning, enhance our peace, Lord. Maak ons vrede groter. Want onder ons vrede het, dink ons beter. Dink baie, baie beter. I'm going to end off now. Because if you are clever, which you, very, you are, you are very bright people, you would have seen that I started off a couple of weeks ago, and what I do, did is I used those fi- I used the fruits of the spirit: faith, hope, love, joy, and peace. That's what we did. Nothing more and nothing less. Or said it net op ander manier gedoen. Baie eenvoudige woorde is hulle nie. Die eenvoud van die woord: geloof, hoop, liefde, vreugde. In vrede. In vodig. Vodige woord. But if you want an abundant life in your relationship with Christ, then you don't have to go look that far. It's through the simple words that we have studied in these last five weeks by just starting from scratch. That's all we've done. To build it to where it is this morning. May God open your heart. May God open your mind. May we come to this place this morning and say, but Father, I come to you and I know these things are essential for an abundant life. Because your son offered himself for me. I can understand that all those things was what your son offered himself for that I could have in abundance. I can have that. Paie keer in ons leven as christen het ons een kort toevoer van goed wat na ons toe moet kom. Ek is daar op die oomlik. But there's some stuff that we need in our life. Because if, they are, if, we, if, if you feel that there's things that are in short supply in your life, Physically. Let us just change your eyes towards spiritually first. 
and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you this morning and ask you, Father, not to help me, not to neglect two fundamental tools that you have given me so that, Father, when it comes to my spiritualness, that I would not neglect that ek nie sal tekort kom van hier die goed neere. And the things that I'm asking for, Father God, are the two tools. The one is called the Word of God and the other one is called prayer, Lord. Ek moet die woord moet studeer en ek moet my tyd en in gebed saam met die bring because I know, Father God, it makes sense now because if you've taken me <coughs> and you've changed me and you've given me my character, the charismaticness that I need in the kingdom of God, then I understand that as a, as a charismatic character reading your book, I will see it in pictures. When I read your book, when, when I read the scriptures, your spirit will give it to me in pictures. You will show me, you will help, help me through these things. When I close my eyes to pray, your spirit will take hold of me, it will guide me it will give me more, it will strengthen me and it will even come and supply the answer in my prayer while I'm praying to you Lord it's because my character has now been touched and I've become this charismatic person within the kingdom of God Lord and I cannot be held anymore I want to break free Father God I want to run out that door, I want to go and tell people about the joy of Jesus Christ That's when God touches us. God picks us up. And He changes us. And He takes us out of the spiritual slump that we find ourselves in. Five keys, my friend. Energize your faith. Fortify your hope. Activate your love. Enhance your joy and enjoy your peace. These are the simple things. And James leaves us with this thought this morning. James and Paul leave us with two thoughts this morning. The first one is from the first book of James, the 21st verse, and it says, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. And humbly, somebody say humbly. And humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. For it has the power to save your soul. We have to continue praying earnestly. I said it's the word of God and it's prayer. It's his voice and it's prayer. You know what he's doing? He says, there's my voice. Pray, communicate with me. That's what they say. It's exactly that. There's my voice. Pray, it's communicating with me. I can speak to you. We can come on a trip and we can walk with each other and we can show each other. Why do I want to do that? Because he says, when you start praying to me, Colossians 4 verse 2 says, devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. My friend, it's just that simple. Will you start from scratch? So ons kan vind, ons weg, en ons verhouding met die Heer Jesus Christus. But I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart, do not walk out that door this morning if you haven't fixed something in your life. If you've sat here this morning, then you would know that God brought you here for a reason. God didn't bring you here to waste your time. God didn't bring you here to waste his time. God brought you here so that you would understand what his heart is for you. God brought you here so that you would come to a place and that which is bothering you, come to a place that you can give it to him, put it on his altar and things will start changing. There's too many things that run in our head. Last week, I had a, I prayed to God. And I said, Lord, I can't anymore. I said, Lord, I can't anymore. I feel like I'm right, I feel like I'm wrong. And then I said, Lord, just, just speak to me, Lord. In a language that I understand. I 
can read Oxford English, Lord, and I can speak it, but I choose not to. Speak to me in a language that I can understand, Lord. And I closed my eyes and I prayed. God spoke to me and he gave me this this vision and he took me down a, a dirt road and I'm walking down a dirt road and there's a farm gate on a dirt road and I have to open the gate but I left without keys and I looked in my hand and I had keys feel a boss still gone I had a whole bunch of keys in my heart. I had, and I looked at those keys and I found three on that bunch of keys. Because I had to open the gate. And the first thought I saw when I, when I saw the gate, I thought, how am I going to get through here? Because it's locked. And the following thing, I had keys in my hand, a bunch of keys. And I looked at the bunch and there were three keys on that bunch. And God says, those are the three keys. Look at them. And I looked at those three keys and the, and the keys were three keys. The one was faith, the other one was what, and the other one was if. And God said to my, my child, there's only one key that will open that gate and it's faith. What if? Those keys must be taken off that key ring and thrown away because that's what's sinking you in your life at the moment is what if. That's what God for the week for me said. And I've deal it with you for the that picture was like a movie man. What if? Of the was brought to What us? Us. Throw it away. Faith. Faith. You see. And when I started faith, when I started this thing, it said, energize your faith, Peter. Your geloof is the claim. Your, energy, your, your, your faith needs energy. Red Bull. Your faith needs that stuff. Ons gaan nie uitloop. Eerste oproep wat jy krij is sleg. Die tweede post, die tweede post, wat jy uithaal, die postbesite is sleg. Eerst die e-mail wat je krijgt, weet je niet wat de kant doet, en dan je blijft God. Je zegt no, I say yes, I know, I've done it. Ik verkoop ook verkoop bij stuur, die andere mensen zullen ze me jammer krijgen. Nee, dat gaat niet. paar oprechte mensen wat opstaan die ander lach voor jou luister vir my volgend die oprechte mensen wat zal opstaan is de charismatic character for God that will get up and say wat sy pad moet ontstap wat sy pad moet ontstap Mijn God en jouw God vooral voor jou volgend. Wat is een pad van jij stap? Wanneer gaan je ophou met jou verskonings als het bij mij komt? Wanneer gaan je ophou met jou verskonings als het bij mij komt? Wat gaan ons doen? Wat gaan ons doen? Will you stand with me this morning, please? First thing I want you to do is take the whole world that's in your head right now, shift it out. Geen om wie jou wie jou slecht behandel het nie. Geen nie om wie die mense is nie. Jy skuif hulle uit jou leven uit. Skuif hulle uit jou kop uit nou. What the circumstances you shifted out of your head right now? 
what you're going to eat just now, shift it out of your head right now. Let us come clean before God this afternoon, you and I. Let us stand before God as His perfect creation. The character that He created the day you opened your eyes. Unblemished child. Innocent little child. Smile on your face. And your parents' face even more if you had parents. And I want you to close your eyes and cut yourself off from the person next to you as well. And I want to ask you this. When last? When last? Did you pray for somebody to accept Jesus Christ? As the Lord and Savior. It's your character, remember? It's your character. When last did you complain against the, the, the complain against the kingdom of God? When last? And the third question is: Are you prepared not to ever do it again? You will pray for people. And you'll stop complaining against God and His kingdom. As much as God gave me three keys, He's willing to give you the same keys this morning. Not mine, yours. And right now, as you're standing there on your own thoughts, misschien dat jy hierdie week en die pen uitgespring, en jy was kwaad, en jy was voelig, en jy het goed gesê wat jy nie moest gesê het, ten oor iemand, of iemand, iets, ask God to forgive you for that, right now. Vraag die Heer om jou te vergewe, vir dit. Maybe you heard something in church this morning. Maybe when Gerard spoke, he pulled, he pulled, he pulled a nerve. Don't get cross. Ask yourself, as ek dat die, God will show you if it's you. But if you persoon dat aantrek nie, God will show you. And you, pro- you probably want to do something and you say, but I can't. Ask God to supply. The key is called faith. You ask me, ook nie of nie. But now it's you and God this morning. And he's on you. Say, Heere Jesus, ek soek werkelijk a double dosis van die vruchte van die gees, Heere. Ek is bereid om voor u te staan vir ochend en te sê, Vader God, in Jesus naam, geef vir my a double dosis van wat ek nodig het om met my leven aan te gaan. And I want us to proclaim as one family, as one body this morning. I want us to proclaim the following, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, this week that lies ahead, that if something goes wrong in my life, I will not blame you. I will not ask questions against your kingdom. But Father, I will turn to your written word and trust you to speak into my charismatic character and to help me in my walk with you. To change the way I think. To change the way I walk. To change the way I do. But Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you as an obedient disciple and ask in Jesus' name, will you allow me to start from scratch? And Father, I ask you,
if you've received this prayer for me this morning, will you help me in my walk, starting from scratch? Enable me, empower me, give me wisdom, give me joy, and above all, release your peace into my life. In Jesus' precious name, all God's people said, Amen. By your donkey, may God be with you. May His Spirit dwell within your vicinity, circumstances, business, house, wherever you go. May whatever you do be touched by the Holy Spirit.